Are we going to go down the inside? We go down the inside massively on a deep dive. We do come and make contact with Elliot. Hey yo, what up? Welcome back to another video. Today we're out here in Hungary, Budapest to be exact. And this is a track that is very unique. I describe it as the Monaco without walls because you're gonna see ladies and gentlemen, overtaking on this track proves to be difficult at times. Like it's just like Monaco where you just have to follow one line all through sector two and sector three. But it's a very fun circuit to drive on nonetheless. So I'm on a wet circuit. This is my nightmare because first of all, I have never driven on a wet circuit in an F2 car in Hungary to be specific. So I was going into this very blind, not knowing how to take most of the corners, but I was just trying my best. So you can see up, we're already in P22 provisionally, and yeah, there was nothing we could have done here. We had so much understeer, it was actually crazy. Coming up towards the final turn, you see that we get an incredible amount of understeer. Trying to make the car stick out of that corner, but it's not working. We do go wide, coming to cross the line, we are P22. Looking at the standings, Mick Schumacher, our rival, gets pole position. Schwarzman after him and Sonoda up in P3. We are somehow in last position, 2.4 seconds off the pace. I cannot even explain what happened. It was a nightmare. Welcome to the Hungara Ring here in Hungary, just a short distance from Budapest. This is a circuit with a lot of history in motorsport. Which of our F2 drivers here today, I wonder, will add to that legacy? The Hungara Ring is located 12 miles northeast of the capital, Budapest. It's 2.7 miles long, featuring 14 corners, and it's got a reputation for making overtaking difficult. Nevertheless, there's a history of some truly exceptional races here. Let's hope that our Formula 2 drivers can serve up some more of that today. Joining me for all today's excitement, a man who is no stranger to this challenging circuit, Davide Valsecchi. Davide, Hungara Ring can be a tricky beast to master. What insight can you give us about today's race? Ciao, Alex. As you say, the circuit can be challenging. There's a lot of slow corner which can make overtaking very frustrating. This will be a good test of this young driver's patience. Waiting for the perfect moment to make an attack will be the key to moving up through the field today. Here is the grid for today's race, which will be starting shortly. A fantastic effort from Mick Schumacher yesterday puts him on pole position. And it's Robert Schwartzman in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Sonoda, Aitkin, Callum Eilot, and Dragovic, Tictum, Alesi, Matsushita, Dan Deruvela, Giotto, Joe, Marcus Armstrong, and Sato, Markelot, Piquet, Delatraz, and Guillaume Samaya, Nisani, Galeo, Mazepin, and the captain. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the grid P22, starting last in the Hungarian Grand Prix. It is five lights, and away we go, getting onto a beautiful launch right off the start. Mazepin, we've already made up that position, now making up the position on Galil. Now we're already up into P20 and it's not even the first turn yet. Now all these cars are just scrambling down here. So we go for the dip dive running into the back of Markelov. But we managed to make it without any damage whatsoever. Now we've already made places up on Nisani and Samaya. Coming down into the third corner I believe. Is it third or second? I'm not sure. But these guys in front of me were battling to the point where they were really slow. I could have made a move there. but. Again, this is like Monaco without the walls. You just can't make a move anywhere. Coming up to this place, I decide to back out of the fight because these guys seem to be going wheel to wheel the entire time. Uh, Delitraz loses out, so now in front of us we make that position and now in front of us we have Markelov, which is a good sign already. Up in with P16 and the lap isn't even over. So, coming up to this part of the track, I will say it again, Monaco without the walls, because this part is so tight to the point where you can't even overtake, right? You're just following the car in front of you, you're trying to keep up with them, so that in the final part of this uh, sector, you can make the move, you can go for the deep dive. So now in front of us, we still have Markel, in front of him, we have Giotto, he's only six tenths away, thinking about making the move. Now it's the end of lap one, in front of us, still Markelov, he is becoming a pain because the sooner I can get past him, the better. So we go down for the deep dive, 
obviously because that's what we do on this channel making up the position already up into p15 now in front of us we have Giotto, and in front of him is our teammate marcus armstrong now i'm gonna speed up this part look at how i am literally following like a train none of us is making a move on anyone Monaco without the walls. I will say it again. Monaco without the walls. So in front of us, Giotto, we go in for the deep dive. Getting the move down the inside. Now, Armstrong is our teammate in front of us. We set a purple sector two. This is now the end of the third lap. Coming up to the ultimate corner. In front of us, we have Armstrong and Juan Huizhou. Now, are we going to make the move here? The thing with F2 cars, they're very evenly matched. Like... For you to overtake, like gain and overtake, you have to set up your exit perfectly. Unless you are me and you go in for the dip dive past our teammate, lap 4 out of 9, already up into P13, it's a good sign. We might be able to just enter the points. Coming up to the end of lap 4, Yuki Sonoda sets the fastest lap of the race, but are we going to reply with that? Yes, we do. Setting a 130.5. Now we're up into P13 with the fast slap. In front of us, Juan Yuzhou. In front of him, Jehan Darovla. Are we going to go for another deep dive? Well, this part of the track, I noticed that the AI lift very early. So I can get a good run. Going around the outside, am I going to make the move stick? Yes, we do. He goes a bit defensive onto the curb. As you look at the replay, you see that I went onto the outside. We were very close, very close, too close for comfort. From his point of view, he goes onto the curb, losing a lot of speed, risking a spin. Now, lap six out of nine, we are still in. We are now in P12 after he made the move on Juan Yuzhou. In front of us, we have Jehan Darovla and Matsushita, so close to making it to the points. The points is P8. We have two laps as we cross the line now. Can we make it to the points? That's a good question. Now, AI lift early again. We get wheel to wheel with the Carlin car of Darovla. Going around the outside, we make it stick again. Now, I can exploit that turn very properly because as long as the AI keep lifting, I will keep gaining positions. Now, here again, Matsushita gets a very bad exit out of that turn. At this time, I go for the inside, changing it up a little bit, setting a purple sector one. Now, in front of us, we have Sato and Drogovic coming up to the final lap of the race. Is it going to be possible to make it into the points? We just need to overtake Sato and Drogovic but we unfortunately run out of track right so coming up the final lap we cannot make a move we finish where we finish started p22 it was interesting but we tried our best now on to the sprint race are we gonna do anything different we'll see another excellent win from prima are all the same spec the winner just looked better out there. It would have been a combination of getting those tires up to running temperature faster and driving to the condition on track. They made it look easy out there today. P -p Podium. We have Schwartzman on the top step, followed by Mick Schumacher, our rival, and Yuki Sonoda rounds up the top three. I should have been up there. That qualifying being wet is what set us back. But I mean, in the, in the future race, we did have the pace. Going up from P22 to P10, or was it P11? That is a lot of positions made. And I do believe the sprint race is going to be much better. On to the standings. We have Schwartzman winning. Mick Schumacher actually lost a position going down into P2. And Yuki Sonoda in P3. We are P10 from P22. Now looking at the standings, the driver's standings. Mick Schumacher in front of us with 15 points. Can we make that up in the sprint race? Let's find out. We're returning after yesterday's feature race for the final event of the weekend. The sprint down on the grid below us. The drivers are spending their last few minutes getting ready. Very soon, they're going to kick this race off in dramatic fashion. Alongside me today, I'm delighted to welcome back to the commentary box the 2012 GP2 champion, Davide Valsecchi. There looks to be a challenging race ahead of the drivers today, Davide. With that in mind, what are you looking out for today? Well, Alex, I want to see how the drivers at the back of the grid are going to roll down. They'll need to make an impact in the early stages, and they're probably hoping for a bit of luck at the start. We may see some bold maneuvers out there today. Now, onto the track, 
for the sprint race. We need to pull out everything that we can manage to pull out this race just to catch up to Schumacher. It's five lights and away we go, getting onto a good start right off the bat. I feel like I haven't gotten a bad start in F2 in a while. Now, in front of us, we have Schwartzman from the Simp Racing Team. Are we going to go down the inside? We go down the inside massively on a deep dive. We do come and make contact with Elliot, almost spinning. That was so close to being a spin. That could have undone everything we've done the entire weekend. So looking at the replay, you see the pink car going kind of crazy, but that's not the point. Look at us. We are right behind there. So we come into the inside. We have made a lot of positions right off the bat, but then we go a bit wide. He didn't leave us a lot of space, so we make contact. I turn haphazardly, as you can see in front of me from Schumacher's perspective, and almost span. I saved the car very well right there. Thinking about going for a move against Elliot, but this part is literally Monaco without the walls as we get onto the curb a bit aggressively. Could have sustained us a lot of low damage, but surprisingly we did not get any. Now in front of us we have Column Elliot. Are we going to go for the deep dive? Yes, from a mile away, we go for the deep dive, making contact again, same turn, with the same person, but this time we get the win out of it. Looking at the replay, I go down the outside from a mile away, he did not see me coming, he did not expect that to be the case, but we managed to make that stick, make a bit of contact, but not enough for any of us to get out of the race or get permanently injured for the rest of it. Now, speeding up this part, I'm chasing Aitken. One thing about this sector, you can't overtake unless you get a crazy exit out of that part where I showed you where the AI gets a lot of lift. But as you can see, we're following, we're gaining, we're losing, we're gaining, we're losing. Coming up to the penultimate turn, we lose the car completely due to the gradient of that section. In a way, we kind of braked wrongly, so the car was more or less flipped, which was almost another spin. Too many close calls for my favor, but we are still gonna push on now up into p5 from p10 take them just a faster lap we set a faster lap still chasing him in, fo in front of him in front of us is aitken i thought it was ticked it, it's actually aitken now aitken is only two turns away from us is this where we make the move stick coming up we get the slipstream we get the drs but again f2 cars don't really benefit much from drs if we both have drs so are you gonna go for the deep dive yes down the inside Again, making contact. We seem to be taking these dives from a mile away every single time, but we managed to execute it. As we set the fastest lap onto the final lap, in front of us now we have Tictum fighting for the final podium position. This is the part where the AI lifts a bit too early. We get the run against him. We go down the inside and we make the move stick. That was actually very close. We were very close, like wheel to wheel. Looking at the replay, you see that this was actually planned from a mile away. Oh, he gets onto the curb, so he doesn't really get a good exit down this turn. We go down the inside, almost pushing him off track, but we were very, very close, too close for comfort, and we managed to get P3. Now, coming up to the final turn, we can't make a move on Alessi, we can't make a move on Drogovic, we're gonna have to settle for P3. It's been a crazy weekend, qualifying last, and then in the future race, we were 10th, now we are on the podium. I did not expect to be on the podium this weekend, but ladies and gentlemen, we made it happen. That was actually a fantastic weekend. I mean, it was a fantastic sprint race, not a fantastic qualifying. That was very close. I think if we made up a little more time in the first laps, we might have been like P2 or P1, but we lost a lot of time fighting guys like Elliot. Elliot is one who cost us a lot of time. Now onto the podium, finally back on the podium. Let's go. <laughs> right, on to the standings. We finished P3. Schumacher finished P8. Actually dropped one position. That's unfortunate. Our teammate up in P12. Now, looking at the driver standings, only four points separate myself and Schumacher. We have pretty much lost the constructors, but the drivers is still within our reach. Right, guys, I'll see you all in the next one. Take care and peace. Testing, voice testing. Do re mi fa sol la do ti